Hi guys, I know it's been a long time and no videos. Actually, I've been busy with some other work and professional exams. And my Xperia SP is quite outdated now. It lasted me for about 15 months. It was really good, but now I needed some new hardware. The smartphone market in India has drastically changed in the past year with some new players in town, especially Xiaomi being the most aggressive one. I also wanted a piece of that action and so got a Xiaomi Mi 3 in August in one of the Flipkart flash sales that lasted for like 2 seconds. This device completely changed the way I look at high-end smartphones. It specs in line and in some ways better than the Nexus 5 for about half its price. It just blew my mind away. Build quality is great. Cam, battery, screen, all that is very nice. I had my reservations about me why, but after using it, I'm not complaining. It's fast, easy to use, and looks good. Sure, I replaced some things that I didn't like about the UI, like uh, the iPhone like launcher, which is pathetic. Immediately replaced with Nova Launcher. I replaced the default web browser for Chrome and Power Amp Music Player and so on. But there are some UI elements that I really like. Like the toggles which include all the toggles I need. And the multitasking screen where you can lock the apps you don't want clear from memory. When you close all the apps, very useful. Houses and security and app permission settings are very nice. Overall, after about 4 months of use, I'm a very happy user. I even got some of my family members and friends to switch to Xiaomi phones like this and the Redmi One S. That is also an amazing phone for its price by the way. Now about the replacement for my Xperia SP. I really like Xperia phones and wanted to see how much better the new ones are compared to my Xperia SP. I wanted to get the best because this year Sony's mid-range portfolio is just plain pathetic. I was confused between the Z3 and Z3 Compact but finally settled for Z3 Compact as it has the perfect size for one hand operation. It is also a true successor of Xperia SP and ZR. A bit overpriced though. I got it for like 39,000 rupees, but I really feel it should be priced at around 30 to 33,000 rupees. It doesn't even come with some freebies like smartwatch or noise cancellation earphones to justify its price. By the side, this phone is just awesome. Perfect size, solid build, insane battery life, great camera, and buttery smooth performance. The screen is just so much better than my Xperia SP. Deep vivid colors, great viewing angles, and very good brightness for using anywhere. The only place where I am a little disappointed is the UI. It's very easy to use, very functional and lag free, but it looks dull and boring. I am not talking about media apps like Walkman, Album, and Movies app. They are excellent and quite possible media apps out of the box among all manufacturers. I'm talking about the other things like settings and the small UI elements like animations and transitions. They just look boring, especially after experiencing Lollipop. Teams do help to make things better, but still teams are very limited and not highly customizable like on the main The thing is most of the UI elements can be replaced body apps, like I've changed the launcher to Nova launcher, dialer app to VX dialer and so on. I'll make a separate video about all the changes I've made to the UI later. So that's it for the new phones. Now about the new tablet. So I have been a Nexus 7 2012 user and fan. Really like the size as it can easily fit in one hand without stretching too much. I skipped the 2013 Nexus 7 as I felt it was underpowered for a full HD screen. Anyways, regular 3 on my Nexus 7 just can't keep up with today's games and apps, and so I needed a tablet very similar to Nexus 7 but with the same power and 
some additional functionality. When I made my purchase decision, Nexus 9 was not a question, but I was not liking the fact that it would have a 4x3 aspect ratio. As all the screens we use, like TV, phone, and PC, have 16x9 or 16x10 aspect ratio. Why is 4x3 being used in tablets is beyond my understanding. I agree that in certain areas, it's better suited like reading books or browsing web in portrait. But it's a waste of screen and watching videos, as almost 30 to 40 percent of the screen is blank, and it is difficult to hold in one hand because it's much wider than 16 by 10 tablets. Enter NVIDIA Shield tablet, a tablet that perfectly suits my needs. It's the best of both worlds. It has the advantages of Nexus devices like stock Android experience, faster updates, and reasonable price, and also advantages of other OEM manufacturers like added functionality over stock Android, expandable memory using microSD and some cool exclusive features and accessories. It's just as fast as the fastest Android tablets received the Lollipop update in the same time period in which Nexus devices got the update. Its price is very reasonable for all the kind of performance and features it offers like stereo speakers, with streaming, special console mode, game streaming from PC, special stylus input and so on. For me personally, this is the best Android tablet of the year. For the price of 16GB Nexus 9, I got the 16GB Shield tablet, Shield controller, flip case and a 64GB microSD. I must say that's an amazing deal. So, for the next few months, I'll be making a lot of videos about these gadgets, testing games and other features, sharing my experience about these devices as they are right now, and also how they will be after future updates. So, lots of videos are coming. Please do let me know if you want any special type of videos or information about these devices in the comments down below. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Bye.